Hello and welcome to another Masterclass interview in Malta brought to you by The Banker. My name is Mike Imson, I'm contributing editor of The Banker magazine, and I'm joined here today by Chris Bond, Head of Global Banking and Markets at HSBC Bank Malta. HSBC in Malta won the Bankers Banker of the Year Award Malta last year. So Chris, first question, how would you describe the banking sector here in Malta? I would describe the banking sector here in Malta as um, strong, as stable, as well capitalised and extremely liquid and extremely well regulated by a a firm but flexible and very accessible regulator. In fact, uh, according to the World Economic Forum's Competitiveness Index for 2009, uh, Malta uh, ranked, I think, top quartile uh, amongst 134 countries for its uh, financial sophistication and it ranked uh, 10th, I believe, in terms of the banking sector soundness. Um, in terms of the, the banks here in the market, uh, the domestic market uh, uh, is very much um, driven by, by HSBC uh, and Bank of Valletta. Between us, we share uh, 90% of the domestic market, but there are some 20 other banks here on the island uh, Banks, uh, subsidiary banks of Portuguese, of Dutch, of Austrian, of German banks, all playing to their respective niches. Mm. But Malta is a small country. It's the smallest member of the European Union, 410,000 population. Yeah. Land area is the, the smallest. Um, how does that make the market here different, operating in such a small country? Well, whilst you're quite correct, Mike, the the population here is some 410,000, but please remember we are are servicing the needs of customers all over the world, um, doing business here in Malta and from Malta, in fact. Malta wasn't that badly affected by the financial crisis. Why do you think that was so? I think going back to the defining characteristics of the Maltese banking sector, uh, extremely well regulated, the banks are stable, they're strong, they're well capitalised, they're liquid. And uh, if we look at liquidity, certainly from an HSBC point of view, we have a very strong retail deposit base. Uh, our, our, we, we don't rely upon um, wholesale funding. It's been very important throughout this financial crisis. Our loans to deposit ratio is in the 70 to 80 percent uh, level. Um, speaking on behalf of the whole banking sector, I think another thing that characterizes uh, the sector itself is the fact that uh, we all have effective risk management policies. We have prudent lending policies and we have conservative investment policies. And those things, I think, have combined to ensure that we, 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 we've sailed through these financial storms relatively well. And I think HSBC, as a, as a, as a global bank, has certainly contributed towards Malta's uh, financial stability. Mm. So what role does HSBC play in the banking sector here, both domestically and internationally? We, we play an important role, Mike. Um, you know, we, we certainly uh, are one of the largest private employers here on the island, uh, with over 1,300 staff uh, within the bank itself. We've also created a further 500 new jobs in a call centre that we've established here to service the needs of our UK uh, UK clients. Um, in terms of our, our, we're privileged to have a market share between 40 and 50 percent but spread across personal financial services, uh, corporate and commercial banking, and my own area, global banking and markets. What what are we doing here? What what do we bring to the island? Um, Specifically, it's our international expertise. The fact that we we provide uh, our customers with HSBC's global reach across 85 different countries, um, therefore... Um, enabling our customers to do business overseas. In addition to which, as well, we're playing a pivotal role in the growth of Malta as an international financial services centre. HSBC Bank Malta just reported a 71 million euro profit for 2009, but that was 26% down on 2008. Why was that? Well, I think like uh, all banks around the world, you know, we're not immune from margin compression. And with interest rates that are low throughout the cycle, uh, we've suffered the same degree of margin compression. But we haven't had any type of government support. We haven't needed it. We've remained profitable. If you look at our profitability for the two-year period during this financial crisis, a mm. uh, total of 167 million euros. That's significantly more than our nearest rival here on the island. Um, and, and generating returns on equity in excess of 15%, which I think you'd agree is probably mm. the envy of most banks around the world, Mike. Mm. 
Um, and, and most importantly, we've remained open for business uh, throughout this period and continue to be open for business for, 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 new, uh, for new opportunities. Mm. Why exactly is HSBC in Malta? It's such a small domestic market and you're such a large international bank. Couldn't you run your international operations for another part of Europe? Okay, good question. We are, we are the world's local bank, first and foremost, and we have been extremely well positioned here in Malta uh, for Malta's entry into the EU um, in 2004 and its later entry into the Eurozone in 2008. Um, we're also very, very well positioned uh, to play, as I said before, a pivotal role in the growth of Malta as an international financial services centre. What are Malta's broader attractions? Why do companies come here? You've told me about why you're here, but what do you think would attract financial firms here um, from other parts of the world? Well, I, I know that you've spoken uh, during this interview process with, with Professor Bannister and Kenneth Ferrugia, and I'm sure they covered those many re- you know, the, the, the many credentials that Malta has. Um, and these are such things as, as its EU membership, its uh, membership of the euro, the fact that it is an extremely well-regulated onshore financial services centre uh, makes Malta extremely attractive. Um, it's got an extremely well-educated, multilingual, mm. uh, but primarily English-speaking workforce. Yeah. Um, that has allowed the growth of a very strong uh, professional services infrastructure. We've talked about the strength of the banking system, and I think the financial crisis has proven that as well. Uh, we've talked about how we have international banks on the island, HSBC included, therefore giving it international reach. A um, whole number of reasons. And let's not forget perhaps that one of the most important, which is uh, quality of life. Mm. I mean, we are so rich in terms of our heritage and culture here. The climate's fantastic uh, and um, it's, it's, it's a good lifestyle. Mm. Now, your area of responsibility is global banking and markets. Yeah. Um, can you tell, tell me about some of the more interesting things that you've been doing or are about to do in, in your line of business? Yeah, yeah cer- certainly, Mike. Um, global banking markets is an umbrella for a, a, a range of activity, including asset management, fund administration, custody, uh, the investment banking side, treasury and capital markets. And we have been enjoying an increasing number of inquiries from funds domiciled overseas now looking at Malta, or new startups looking at Malta as a potential domicile, um, ranging from insurance companies to fund managers to um, professional treasury investment functions. Um, And we are using our, our, our international connectivity to bring these clients to Malta. In addition to which, we're obviously very closely linked with our operations around the world. Global Banking Markets runs a, a hub and spoke uh, organisation structure and we really import best practice and expertise from the group to offer our customers more and more international product. For example, for our investors we have the World Selection Fund, a suite of investment products that are specifically tailored to our investors' needs. Uh, we are enabling our, our, our corporate customers to manage their exposures to foreign exchange fluctuations and interest rate fluctuations through a number of hedging products. Just a couple of examples. Chris Bond, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure.